Hi, my name is Henning. And my name is Olivier. And we are looking at the Danish government's statement of 50% wind in 2025. Is it possible? What does it mean? And what are the consequences? So let's have a look at the current situation. We see the electricity demand here depicted as the red curve, varying over weekdays and weekends and clearly seeing night and day periods. And in the same graph we see as the green shaded area the wind power production. See it's a natural source and correspondingly fluctuating. So from this graph we can see there is a clear lack of wind power production in order to satisfy the total electricity demand. But anticipating 2025 when we increased wind power production up to an amount of 50%, we see that in some periods of time we can satisfy the ele electricity demand and even have a surplus. So we produce more power than we need. But on the other end we have also periods where even though we have 50% of, of wind power production cap capacities, in some periods we can't really satisfy the electricity needs. So one could either think of importing energy from other countries in those periods or exporting our surpluses to get rid of it. But the more clever way would be why not store our surpluses and whenever we have a period of low production outcome, we use it. The thing is, we would need a very huge tank in order to absorb and store those areas and use them whenever we need it. So, let's think about what storage capacities and possibilities do we have nowadays. On the one hand, we have hydropower. Hydropower is a common technique where we use the surplus of energy to move water up a hill and whenever we need the energy back, we just release the potential energy of the water and get our energy. Two disadvantages, in a flat country like Denmark, we don't really have the high hills for it and it's economically disadvantages since we have to pay if we want to pump it up and we have also to pay if we want to get it back. So another possibility would be electric vehicles or hydro hydrogen power, but up to now the grid is not really ready for it and there are lots of problems coming along with those two techniques when integrating them, them into the electricity system. So we have to find another strategy or think further and can we answer this? Maybe we can. At least we have looked at the production side here and let's look more at the consumption side and look at the consumption of households. So this is the consumption of households distributed across different appliances. So you have your computer, your light, your washing, your drying, but there's two important categories here. It's the fridges and the freezers on one category and the heating of your air and of your water. And those two have the characteristic that they have inertia. So they can be cut off during a short period of time as long as you don't impact the comfort in your home. And the idea is that this gives you flexibility. And this flexibility has to be activated. If you can activate it in a clever way, you can actually use it as storage. So this is the concept we have here. The objective is to balance demand and wind power. And you can do that if you can store energy by activating flexibility. How can you motivate users to do that? You can do it by using a price signal. So basically by changing the price of energy, Differently, depending on if the wind is blowing or not blowing, you can you know, provide some incentives for people to actually use energy. And this is what our thesis is about. We are designing a price generator here, able to control the flexible demand. So in order to do that, we are started out by analyzing an experiment that took place in the United States a couple of years ago with 27 houses working and affected by a price signal. And the outcome was that they actually succeeded in shaving the peaks, meaning that they took this area and shifted all this consumption to off-peak area during the night, basically. Um, but we want to test our control in a real-life situation. The closest we can get to that is a simulation framework that we designed here. And this is simulated consumption data. And what we can see is that when we had an increase in price here, we actually lowered the consumption here. 
So our simulation framework is basically simulating the Danish energy system and we're able to test different controls. And the objective here is to test different control methods in order to achieve our objective of increasing uh, the penetration of wind power into the system. Thank you.